two different. I think I'll just open it regular and go with it. If we have to go to roll call, we will. Okay. As for consent, pardon me. Hey, I think we're good. Okay. Is it uh, Mark that's with HCAM this morning or this tonight? We're we doing cold ones. Yeah, we are. I, that's what I heard. Here's someone else. Oh, wow. Bob Snyder. Admit. Okay, now we have to do. What did we tell us in recording? Oh, it is. Very good. So, okay. Okay. So, hi, Bob. All right. So, um, it is now 6 30 on uh, Wednesday, April 3rd, the Upper Charles Trail Committee, and we have a quorum. So, we are remote, and thank you, Bob, for joining. So, I have to read this script. So, um, as a preliminary matter, this um, Upper Charles Trail Committee and Chair of the Upper Charles Trail um, permit that all the members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. In the affirmative. So, um, Thank you, Bob, for, for being here tonight, or Mark. So, Eric Sonnet. I'm here. Bob Snyder. Here. Uh, Eli Post. No. Jim Cirillo. Here. Ken Parker. Not yet. Erfron. Yeah. Jamie. Here. Tim Ritterbush. Not yet. Uh, Jane Moran is present. Okay. So anticipated speakers. Oh. You just said the sign of the table. Recognize it. You look like you're part of the building. I know. Yeah, I know. Are you part of the building? You know, I was so careful. I thought when I drew up this list, I am sorry. My apologies. So, good evening, everyone. This is the open meeting of the Upper Charles Trail Committee, and it's being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 22 of Acts 2022. And for this meeting, the Upper Charles Trail Committee is competing by um, conference or the video Zoom as posted on the town, town's website. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, be aware that others may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by this recording. And let it show that in the record that Ken Parker is now here and present. <laughs> Okay, and I'd also like to Bob. note. Hmm? Yeah, Bob. Yeah. Bob, you noted that you were present, correct? I think he was the second one. I did. You got volume on that third time. I'm sorry, what? You got volume on that thing somewhere. There's a check out at Rose. Yeah, I thought it was Okay, I'll turn it down. Okay, so um, we're going to, tonight's agenda, I'll just review it. So we're going to review, discuss, and develop our recommended modifications to the Upper Charles Trail Committee charge, specifically regarding the scope of work of the committee, the process for undertaking that work, and committee composition. The recommendations are to be provided to the select board for the consideration. And so for the documents for the review are uh, number one, the red lined Upper Charles Trail Committee charge, 
uh, created by um, the TCMC and the red line of the Charles uh, Building Committee by the, um, I don't know who did this, but this, I, I, I'm going to start from the beginning. The documents to be reviewed are the red lined TCMC committee charge. Those are the documents that went out. This is just a typo. And the Upper Charles Trail Committee <clears throat> Building Committee charge that was drafted on 10 3 of 2023. And the Trails Committee draft charge dated 10 3 23. And that if we have time, we'll also review the minutes of the last meeting. So if we could just kind of take them in order. And Peter Lagoy is also present. And uh, thank you, Peter, for being here, because I'm hoping that you can answer any questions that we might have. Oops. Okay. So if we dive, um, I don't know if anyone has any preference on how we start, but just taking it from the top, um, it might make sense to start with the formatting and uh, for the upper, for the, I think the TCMC management committee charge and go through that. And I will note that I popped into a few meetings that they had. And Peter, you put quite a bit of work into this. It's a point of order. I thought the charge from the select board was for you folks to look at your charge only, not our draft. Um, our draft is something that's gone to the select board, really wasn't the purpose of this meeting. Your charge was specifically to look at the Upper Charles Trail Committee's charge, and as part of that, to consider what Irfan had put together, which he provided to you, and then what we, as the Trails Committee, had put together, our suggested version. All of that, then, is, is to the select board, but they wanted your input on your charge as the people who were closest to what you've been doing and how that would, our suggestion would be. Yeah. So thank you for that. Um, so if you remember when we had Peter and I met with Irfan, Norman and Elaine, uh, about a week ago or less. And at the end of the meeting, I was kind of confused because there was so much going on. And the direction was given to Elaine to help with the wording for this agenda to make sure that we were all on the same page. And that's the way this agenda came out. So if you look at the agenda, we're looking to the documents for review, the refined um, Upper Charles Trail Committee charge, the Upper Charles Trail Bid Building Committee charge, the draft, Guys, did, and also the draft charge of 1023. This committee actually did exactly what you said on our last meeting. We reviewed our current charge and we submitted those changes or no changes or whatever the comments were. We, we passed them in. In fact, they're Think those are the minutes for tonight's meeting. So this tonight's meeting is to re review the, re the red line documents. I think those were really provided for two reasons. One, for the Upper Charles Trail Building Committee, which is what our suggestion yep. is for a name going forward. Yep. And to, for your committee, which did not have those last time, to look at that. Mm -hmm to look at what Irfan put together and then take that in consideration with, with what you did last time to come up with an Upper Charles Trail Committee or Upper Charles Trail Building Committee charge. That's what the select board allowed you to review. The fact that the trail allowed us, allowed us yeah. very thoughtful of them. Yes. No, no interrupting. What is 
<laughs> what we had put together was the trail committee charge. We looked yeah. at our charge and revised that, but that I don't think, even if it may be in the agenda, in, yep, it's, it's in the agenda. It is the agenda. Okay, yeah. but it, all right. I mean, but it, it shouldn't be because I think as far as what the selectmen's ruling was, that's not within the bounds of what the selectmen rule. But if you want to look at it, that's perfectly fine. And I'm certainly happy to answer questions. The reason we provided that was because in our charge and in the Upper Charles Trail Building Committee charge, there are some interactions and Correct. ways they work together and, and similarities. And I think that that was really the importance of having I agree, and, and I, I appreciate that background information. Is there, and I just want to back. Just wondering, is there, is there a way to get the uh, the new charges up there so we can see it? Would be ideal. Oh, yeah. You can but, pull it up on your cell phone. I sent them all to you. No, I, I, I can see them electronically. Oh, is that what you mean? Well, I unless you want to pull it up on your cell phone. Okay, so um, let me get back to Peter. It's in the agenda. If we want, to, if you're not clear with that, if you're uncomfortable with that, I suppose we can just call it a day. But I understand that this is um, the scope of tonight's meeting. But if you're not comfortable with that, maybe we should just go back. I'm fine. I'm, I'm just, whether it fits is all. I'm, but I'm, I have no problem with it. Um, okay. Yes. Quick question. Yes. I, I, I've got a couple. Of, I've got the things that were emailed. I reviewed them. You referred to one that was put together by Airfront. Whatever it is. Which one is that? Because all the ones I looked at were put together by TCMC. Is the Airfunds the February 20th, 2024? Yes. Okay. Yes. Here. No, because it's from the. It's. How is TCMC on there? No. They're separate well, documents. TCMC is on one of them, the one that's TCMC. You have to look at you the. You got to go to the email you itself. You have to go to the email itself. I, yeah. rena I renamed them. Well, tell me, let me know again. Jim. Supposedly put together by our friend. The one that has the February 20, 2024 up in the top left. Yeah, yeah that's our friend. Yeah. And so he took our original. He took the markup. very, very original. Yep. Yeah. And he gave his own. Correct. His markup of what his guidance, I guess, would be. So I would propose, if no one else has anything to say, that we look at the prepared um, document by the TCMC dated October 3rd, 2023, which is the Trails Coordination and Management Committee uh, charged and the, the red line document that that the TCMC is proposing. And so the process that we used at the last meeting worked. So just to make it clear, we can do the TCMC review first. We'll go around the table and get comments. Then we can review the formatted um, text, the red line document by the TCMC for the Upper Charles Trail Committee, if that is comfortable for everyone. And then the last one we can review is the, the charge, the Upper Charles Trail Committee adopted by the select board that Erfron did as, as a third one, okay? So we're, we're doing the newest that Erfron updated last? Yes. Oh, there's another we one from Earth Fund updated. Is that what? Okay, so. There's one from Earth Fund. I don't understand well, why we're going to help balance from Earth Fund. No, no. Earth no, Earth we're going to because. It's a very little, very few right. changes. No, 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 no. Okay, so let me just <laughs> help you understand this. According to the agenda that Elaine and Norman <laughs> and coming from the meeting that Peter and I were in, uh, it was decided that we would review these three documents. All right. And the first one is going to be the red line document that the, uh, What's the date? proposed. It's October 3rd, and it's proposed by the TCMC. 
and this is for the trails coordination management committee and the the purpose of you know how they envision their trail going forward and then the next one is the red line document also proposed by the tcmc that how their committee envisioned the upper charles trail committee the how they envisioned that and then the last one we can review is the one by Erfron. Why don't we review that one first? Because so I think- make a motion that we accept Erfron and adjourn and go home. I don't understand why we're even talking about these other ones. I mean, that's all rubbish. If this is what the select board want, why are we even talking about the, the other ones? I don't understand that. Um, I, well, from simplicity, but frankly, this is the biggest pile. Of okay, so I there see. is a motion. Okay, all right. So, <laughs> I think, in all fairness, we have a responsibility to discuss this. But this is the select board. We discuss no, no, no. everything. No, no, no. Discuss. Okay. Excuse me, gentlemen. But this is right? Uh, yes, but he is. Uh, he is. So he's acquiescing to Peter too. No, 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 no. Uh, well, okay. I don't know why we're just not even knowing you're a casual meeting. Okay, excuse me, gentlemen. I think that um with all due respect in going forward, and I I think it one of my last emails going out was that I think it's very important that we listen to what the folks at the town, the annual town meeting set. Okay. Here. All right, no, shh, no interrupting. The second thing is that we review these documents with a cooperative and a collaborative thought process going forward. Us, just us, not TCMC, it was just us. Thank you. Okay. I just want to we have to, All right, please, no interrupting, okay? You'll have your turn. We're going to go around the table and everyone will have a chance to discuss. And hopefully this is going to be, it is, it is going to be in a collaborative and a thoughtful and a respectful manner going forward because the annual town meeting voters spoke. And what I would also like to have everybody kind of incorporate when we're going around and reviewing these documents, um, and I know, you know, I sent them out early enough and I did send out a memo asking everybody to review them thoughtfully so that you will have your thoughts ready so that we can add something to the conversation. Um, uh, to, you know, acknowledge what the town annual town meeting members voted for. So hopefully going forward, we have a, a better process or maybe, you know, whatever happens, happens. Which but, one of these documents outline what town meeting said? Because I was there and I... Oh, oh, okay. So, all right. So you're going to have a chance to speak. So we're going to go around the table in a respectful manner. Okay. So I would also like to mention at this point in time that Tim Ritterbush has joined. <laughs> and if you want to hand out a, yep. an agenda to him. Yep. That would be great. So Tim, where we are now is that we're just getting ready to open the conversation to discuss the, T, um, the red line document that the TCMC, the Trails Coordination Management Committee charge, um, drew up to redact Peter. Uh, Okay, I might ask you for some help here, not you, okay. Peter. <laughs> so, because I do know, because I poked my nose into many of your meetings, mm -hmm. and you and your committee put a lot of thought into redrafting both the TCMC's uh, committee charge and the Upper Charles Trails committee charge. So, I don't have a particular preference to which we discuss first, but... Um, they're both there, the which we are going to review tonight. So we will go around the table and um, and discuss that. So hopefully everyone's had a chance to review both those documents. So I will start 
to my right. And yeah, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Yeah, no. <laughs> I will start uh, to my left. No, start to your left. Do you think you should start with people who are here last time? <laughs> okay, so when we are speaking to right. the red line document that uh, the TCMC committee, and they did put a great deal of thought into this red line document, um, do you have thoughts or changes? I mean, they did a good job putting in uh, new thoughts and crossing out current language. So, and Peter is here to talk to us, to answer any questions that we might have. So this is the TCMC document that we're speaking to. So, Jim. Okay. Uh, I reviewed all these documents. Um, I'm not going to speak to TCMC's anything. Frankly, I think they're told, I'm disgusted by this whole charade. It's nothing but a sham. It's a travesty how this has been, how this has been done. As far as I'm concerned, TCMC has commandeered this whole proceeding. Uh, Peter says that, uh, you know, they want to get input from us because we, you know, what do you say? Comments because we're the closest to it. Well, nobody's asked for our comments in, I don't know, what, nine months? Uh, I've seen no progress on Upper Child Trails since we've been suspended. Uh, but I think the whole thing is just, bullying the select board into accepting whatever charge it is. And uh, and I'm offended at the fact that we've been besmirched by somebody, uh, you know, look, gloves are out, by Peter, TCMC, whoever it is. All right? Frankly, I'm insulted. Um, the only thing that I want to discuss is what our friend put together. Okay. Uh, so we'll is that actually on the agenda? No, it is on the agenda, okay, but great. we're going to wait. So I'm willing to accept what our friend did. Okay. Because it's reasonable and it keeps the committees with separate. Um, okay, we'll get to goal. that. Thank you, Eric. Do you have um, some thoughts about yes, the I agree with red line? Okay. And uh, well, that's it. Okay. I agree with Jim. All right. So, Tim. No comment. No comment. Uh, Scott. What? <laughs> People have very few words. Um, I agree that us reviewing the TCMC charter is out of scope. Um, there are comments that are made uh, relative to the building committee that I think will be relevant to review only if any decisions are made that that becomes a thing. But right now, I think it's right out. It's out of scope. So I, I really, um, I have individual feedback and comment and questions about it, but I don't think it's relevant for this forum. Okay. Thank you. Ken. Yeah, I was in agreement with what people are saying and that uh, I don't see a great need to go into uh, all the details for you uh, or um, the trails committee. Uh, the one thing that matters, but it's also uh, relevant to our own charge has to do with the joint individual that, you know, it has to do, you know, that that's on both committees. So we, we can discuss that, but that's also on our own document. And therefore it's not really crucial that I see it, that we discuss it in the context of the, of the trails committee charge either. I, I mean, I don't really have a lot of objections to um, the charge here for the trails committee. I, uh, I haven't, I, I gotta say, I haven't read it all that carefully. But it seemed uh, reasonable to me in most ways. Um, you refer to Irvine charge. No, I'm talking about the Trails Committee one. I don't know. Uh, talking about, yeah. Okay. So uh, there is, uh, so Irvine's charge, yeah. So we can't discuss. All right. No, so. we're going to come to that. Um, I'm not sure I'm seeing everything because there's the crossed out sections along with the sections that aren't crossed out. And that makes it a little... Look for the one with the least amount of red. I help the, no, no. the whole thing is red. There's no, look for one with very little red. No, please, no cross talking. Okay, I can. Look the whole thing is red because it's a red font and it's red line. So it's all red. That's all I'm saying. Okay. 
Uh, we're going to be going around a couple of times. So if you think of something, write it down. We can get back to you. Uh, Jamie. Um, so I agree. This is about a different committee. Um, I did like that they talk about establishing trail standards for the select board to approve. I think that's a really admirable goal. Um, I like the function of someone being on both committees. I think that makes sense. Um, and I like that they call out the expectation of semi-annual basis to attend the organizations that they're trying to liaison with. Um, so those are the things that I think are really positive and could have a positive impact on our charge. Uh, thank you. I actually agree with Scott, Ken, and Jamie. There are some really good points in this red draft that can be pulled into a future draft, but also, oh, Bob, before I before I start on my spiel, would you like to say something? Thank you. Um, yes, well, I, uh, I agree, especially with the sentiment that uh, it's hard to read this thing from a cell phone, um, which is all I've got to read it from. And uh, now my cell phone is telling me that it's running out of juice, so it could get worse for me. Um, and my um, principal feeling is that um, the membership, uh, the membership arrangement, when we get around to talking about the membership across the um uh, trails committee and this subcommittee or wherever we are building committee um will make it harder to get any kind of a positive vote because of the fact that there's uh gonna kind of a two-thirds vote is required in all cases to do to make any decision so that's just a gut feeling i have that it's gonna be harder to come up with a a binding decision uh, from this from this arrangement, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Um, so we're going to go around the table again. So um, my initial thought on this is that the TCMC, both this um, red line document and the red line document for the. Um, supposed new Upper Charles Trail Committee charge is based on one committee with an umbrella, under an umbrella auspices. So I do not see that there's a place for, you know, um, a, a new conversation because the select board, according to Irfan, who I'm sorry is not here tonight, has said that according, and you might be able to confirm this, Peter, is that they are going to be two separate committees, the Upper Charles Trail Committee and the TCMC Committee, whatever their names seem to be. So if you look at these two red line documents, which the TCMC committees put a great deal of time into, it's all based on one committee with a subcommittee no um, when we put that together we had already heard the guidance from the select board and while we disagree with it we do think trails are trails and there ought to be one umbrella organization we also were looking at a model much more similar to school committee school building committee where there's two separate committees Correct. with a lot of interaction so this is based on the potential of two separate committees Correct, but under the authority. Not, not under one, it's two separate committees. Well, that's not my understanding from what I heard. So that needs further clarification. But my my understanding as of last, right. a few days ago, was that there's going to be two distinct committees reporting solely to the select board, not one committee reporting to the Upper Charles Trail Committee reporting to the TCMC committee. Correct, and that's so, that's what our guidance was from the select board, and that's the two that could documents be. that we provided to them. And it's in that email that I sent when it's, I sent both of them. Well, 
I don't see it in here. Maybe you can point it out, but that's not what I. Well, there's nothing here. in there that says one reports to the other, and that's kind of that's the point. By it not being there, that means the two committees, as separate committees, was the intent. Well, um, that's really not clear. So at this point, I'm going to go with what's written, and it's it's clearly states to me that in these documents that the Upper Charles Trail Subcommittee would report to uh, the Trails Committee or the TCMC or whatever it's going to be called for two-thirds approval for voting of expenditures and things like that. It's throughout the whole document. But that regardless of that going forward, that's what's written here. So um, going forward, but to to Jamie's point and some other points, there were some there were some things in, within that document that I think that could be captured, that could be used going forward to improve um, a separate Upper Charles Trail Committee, if we thought about it. And that would have to be a further discussion. So going forward, we're going to go around the table one more time and speak to the um, red line document presented by the TCMC for the Upper Charles Trail Committee. It was a separate document? It was a separate document. Can I make a comment about that? No, we're going to come around the table. Oh, first, I mean, we're already dropping the whole first one because I do have a comment about the TCMC one, which I, I guess I'd like to... I think that's what we're going on the table. We're going to go around the table. You can include it in the loop if you want. Yeah, but now we're going on to a different document than the one I want to make a comment on. Yeah, I think he's going back to the first document. I should, I should have said it in my... We are going to the second document. So should we finish the first document? All right. Well, that's all. what is it that you would like to say, well, Ken? Okay, so the, the, the crucial thing that has to do with the subcommittee business is, in my opinion, is at the very end of the red line where it has to do with what votes TCMC or what was TCMC that would include, which has to do with budget request for town and state funds, trail route, trail surface, and trail development schedule. Now, I don't really mind TCMC voting on those, but if they uh, do, uh, that raises a question, of course, as to what exactly our committee is doing. And in the past, that is what our committee has done. Correct. And so I do think it's uh, it's a little problematic there. Uh, the way it's worded, when I read it the first time, I wasn't totally clear as to what are those vo votes for to be by the trails committee, uh, to be in coordination with this committee or not. And I think those are the kind of things. Like a joint meeting. It was a joint meeting, committees. and both committees have to have two charges. Okay. Correct. Okay, so it, 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 those four charges are to be done by both committees. Correct. That's what I wanted to clarify. Right. In a joint meeting. And I see Peter nodding his head. Yes, that, that's Let's correct. So the, the issue was that, if you remember, a few years back, there was a um, application for mass trails grant money. Yeah. And both the trails committee and the upper Charles trail committee put in for that. In, in the in the Upper Trail Trail Committee got $120,000 or something like that through the Mass Trails Grant system. And we we did not get that. Um, as a wealthy community, Hopkins is pretty unlikely to get two of those type of grants. And essentially what I was told in my debrief with Amanda Lewis, who runs that program was that we basically helped you folks out because they saw two submissions from Hopkinton. They said, we're not giving Hopkinton any more than one. One says regional trail, we'll toss the other one. They basically didn't even look at ours. And so the, the thought was, that, and, and there may be cases where one non-regional trail is a higher priority for the town. So the idea was that both committees would get together and prioritize, okay, if we're gonna apply for mass trail grant funding, this is the one we're going to apply on in in order to make it fair it would have to be a two-thirds vote in other words you know no one person who's on two committees could swing it we had to get it we had to have agreement within the trails committee in the upper charles trail committee room to make a decision so that was that was the point of that was to try and address that situation 
Okay, thank you. I actually spoke with Amanda during that same thing because of the concerns that you had. And my feedback from Amanda was that um, both applications were good. Our application actually mentioned and showed where we were going to connect to Milford and to Ashland at the end of the day, even though we were going for a smaller piece of the action in between. Um, the bottom line was because monies were short that year, um, they could not afford to give towns all of, uh, you know, multiple grant, multiple application awards, uh, unless they mentioned the regional. And in fact, there were two or three other towns, and I provided that documentation to the select board at the time because you had raised this issue and showed that other towns had been awarded uh, multiple um, applications because they had mentioned um, reaching out to different um, trail systems in neighboring towns. So that's within the purview of the trails committee or the uh, TCMC going forward, if you wanted to look into that going forward and see if that's a possibility, I th I would definitely think that that could happen. Um, there is that possibility um, because basically the TCMC has full wide range of trails all over the town, not only here, but in Westboro, um, you know, we have, we border five different towns, Southboro, there's multiple, multiple applications. So I would um, urge the TCMC to kind of look into those things and not state that that's um, not use this as a crutch to say that that's, that that would never um, be allowed because it has been, granted in other towns. But we have certainly, both committees, a lot of work to do. <laughs> so maybe we can start now going around and looking at the red line document that we speak to addressing, I believe it's the Upper Charles Trail Committee. Just, is that the fourth one? Oh. No, this is the second one, I believe. Dated October 3rd. October 3rd, and yep. it says prepared by TCMC in the top right. Thank well, you. It says UCTC charge in the, yep. at the top. Okay. Okay. okay, I'll play along, I'll play along at home. So, um, what are your thoughts after looking at this? Well, I'm going to say two things. One is, I don't understand why whatever committee it is would not request and advocate the TPA money. And I think it's a good idea to have a member of one committee on the other committee and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Though I don't think it will ever be accomplished to have a committee approve a member from the other committee uh, as is described. Mm -hmm. Each committee gets to approve the other committee member mm -hmm. upon the members. I don't know how that's going to work. I think that would just get mired. Okay. I mean, Interesting. And, and by the way, we're like, you know, we already we already comprise members as uh, described in here. For example, I'm the one with the engineering and environmental and construction background. Do I like trails? I love trails. Do I run on them as much as some other people? Absolutely not. But doesn't mean that. So, so anyway, so I have those two questions. One. Why not ask for CPA? Why not apply for CPA grants? And two, I'm okay with switching up members. Okay, so just let me. I'm going to point. Oh, one more. I don't. I don't agree that liaisons should not vote. That okay. makes absolutely no sense. I agree with that, but we'll get to that when we get to our firm's document. But um, well, I think yeah. All right, um, Eric. I don't have anything to add other than what Tim said. Tim. I think the idea behind coordinating the two charges is actually a good idea. Um, I think because I think that they do the two boards for things related, so coordinating them makes a lot of sense. I mean, um,
So I think, I think it does make sense and what's working alone, bringing this together. So I appreciate that they went through and did this. I don't have a whole lot of comments on the content. Okay. I mean, it's been a lot, but I don't really, I'm not sure it's like I get joint votes. It's actually difficult. Well, that would be the idea of having no, one committee. Yeah. That's why you'd need, that's. Okay. Yeah, so that so was my comments. It's, okay. Scott. Hello. Um, let's see, where do I start? I think uh it is it would be very challenging um to have to to get the two-thirds votes and coordinate that and i think it would muddy some waters um and there will be healthy probably conflict meaning meaning uh com competition for funding because that's the nature of obviously states and and you know single sourcing <clears throat> Um, so I think that you know the two thirds vote would be challenging, and I, but I do think that the two groups should should there should be something uh, where the two groups uh, create transparency with one another and try to coordinate where possible. So there needs to be some reference to that, and maybe go to the select board if both want to go at the same time for state or trails funding. Um, the other point would be that I think. Um, I like the concept of staggered terms, but I think it's going to be difficult because we're in a volunteering world. So you start getting a little bit complicated and you start end up with a lot of gaps because you'll have people that are willing to volunteer, but then they roll off after a year or whatever. Um, so I, 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 I like the concept, but I don't know if it's practical uh, with the staggered um, terms. Um, uh, I, 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 do you think there's something to be said about um, serving consecutive terms? Uh, I don't know if it would be three years or what have you, but I think there's some benefit at least stating that that there's a maximum consecutive terms, but no limit on the number of times someone can serve. Because I think there's benefit in experience and even stepping away and then coming back could be a ben benefit. Um, after our last meeting, when we talked about liaisons, I thought long and hard about, um, you know, the, the key issue of whether they should and shouldn't vote. I think there's benefits, pluses and minus to both. But I think where I stand, I know where I stand, is that liaison shouldn't vote. Um, because what I think it does is it actually creates um, sort of a natural, uh, a potential um, locking out of votes that could come to represent the general population um, and the liaisons would be focused, uh, they're, they're appointed uh, by the other committees and not necessarily someone coming from the general population for the sole interest or just the trails. So I think there there could be, it doesn't, it is isn't an absolute term because we obviously have some very valuable liaisons and members that are doing a great job in voting. So um, I think that it just opens the door um, to potential um issues of of blocking out or or, or potentially not uh, allowing um the general population to represent on on a committee if there if there should be an increased demand it blocks out a couple positions and then the last thing <coughs> as i look down <coughs> excuse me is around um uh the 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 the, the concept of I think I think it, I think we need to we need to be very crystal clear on the two different roles. We've talked about this as a group and the select board and other people. Even I think um, Peter and others have talked about being very clear as to the role and the function of the Upper Charles Trail Committee is to create the regional trail right and the connection. Whereas the Trails Committee is specifically specifically focused on intertown segments, right, um, or routes. So I think we need to be very explicit uh, uh, and, and in our charter probably create um, that comparison to, to eliminate future, long past us, future confusion between the two roles of the committees. 
Uh, so again, just summarizing the interrelationship, I think there needs to be um, there needs to be overlap in membership. There needs to be stated coordination between the two, collaboration, coordination, and there needs to be explicitly clarifying the differences between the two committees. You don't think does that it does that now? Um, I don't think it. No, I mean explicitly mentioning in our charter how we do differ from the. Uh, from the trail screening. Don't you think that the two charges in and of itself explicitly state the differences? I'm, I'm, I thought this was feedback. I didn't know this was for counterpoint, point, but oh, with all due respect, sorry, Chair. No, that's okay, um, but I'll clarify. I'm stating that in our charter, we should explicitly state it because if you look at one charter, it requires people to constantly pull up the two charters, which we're forced to do now. Had that been done early and early on, explicitly stated to outline the difference. I'm not saying all these would, uh, problems would challenges would go away, but it would be a little bit easier. That's my only feedback. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, Ken. Well, so um, I don't know. I suppose it's it's possible that I think I agree with Scott about the staggered terms. I. Uh, obviously, this would require that we reduce the, the present size of our committee. Um, I'm not sure uh, about the term limits, just whether they're designed to be uh, applicable to the past or only to the future or what. Uh, doesn't really say it's the future, but I don't really know that. Secondly, well, in addition. Well, would you like to ask Peter? He, his committee wrote it up. Yeah, I think we're on a go, go forward basis. So starting now. And is how how does this is this consistent with other committees in town? Yes, it is. It's not staggered terms. I think staggered. is pretty standard. Staggered. There are yeah, I'll be using the term staggered. <laughs> but but the term term <laughs> yeah, the staggered terms are consistent. Certain limits on members by members. Yeah, they're two yeah, different they're things. You are correct. Staggered terms are so that we don't like two years or one year or yes. three right. year. Yeah, but um, you're right. No, and I think that we currently do that. It's the term limits. Term limits. Term limits. Is term limits. Yes. So, Thank you, Tim. So I don't know whether I agree that this committee ought to be penalized. Beyond all other committees from for having term limits. Term limits is what you're talking about. Okay. Also, the liaisons to the other uh, listed organizations would make it difficult for a seven member committee to fulfill all of those just from difficulty of I mean it's just playing a lot of a lot to do for everybody. It's a little easier with a larger committee that we've had in the past, I think. But um Yes. Uh, so the, the way that the two thirds is envisioned, they, there would be uh, 13 people altogether, I guess, right? 11. And two. And nine, I thought there were nine and two. No, for the, I, I'm talking about the joint. The joint meeting. Seven members from this committee. Yeah. And then whatever the membership number is from TCMC. Which is also seven. seven. So that's 14. So it's 13. 15. 15. Oh, 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 the 13. Uh, the wrong way. I thought 13. Just to be clear, that's what I, I don't know what that's what, what you're saying, but that's what I understand it to be. 13 people. Yep. Oh, I mean that. Um, I don't know. I suppose it could work, uh, but it could be a challenge. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't. I agree with Jim about the uh, CPC. I don't see a reason to explicitly exclude our committee from being able to seek such funds. I'm not sure that the rest of the charge does exclude that. It's just that in one, in, in one place it's written in directly, and uh, since it it says elsewhere that you could apply for local money, I. I assume that means CPC. So mm -hmm. I don't really have a yeah. maybe that maybe that doesn't matter. No, I think it does matter. Well, it, 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 but what matters is, is whether or not we can seek funds. So well, whether it's necessary that it say that in the charge, I don't know. According to that, it means that we could not without the approval, without two thirds approval of the joint committee. Uh, Bob, oh, should we go to Bob or should we go to Jamie? Geographically, Bob. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> um, 
I don't have, I don't have much to add. The um, I would say I think that this these two documents that were on the second of don't differ very much. Aren't these both the TCMC or Trails Committee revised charge? Really? And don't they even have the same date? Um, so for that reason, I guess this thing that I think we're on now is what I thought what I was talking talking to the first time around, but um, I don't know that anything has changed about that. So, um, so um, I continue to question uh, how a 13 member committee can make uh, a lot of decisions, uh, important decisions when everyone will require a two thirds vote. Um, and I really appreciate Peter pointing out that he was not envisioning uh, a single committee here, but rather two committees. Because um, I too thought that um, we were speaking to the one umbrella committee concept. So I appreciate him telling us that that's not what, what he's looking at right now. And uh, and otherwise, um, I don't have much to add. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I can see where some of the inspiration for the way that this is worded came from, as far as looking for creating some structure mm -hmm. to ensure there's public feedback. Um, and engagement with more than only the members of the board. I think that is valuable. I think we talked about that when we, at the last meeting I attended um, upstairs, the importance of really identifying how we're getting feedback and elevating the um, concerns of the general public, of citizens and residents of Hopkinton. Um, I think the liaison question, it looks like that's not meant to be you attend every meeting of the other commission. It looks like it's a semi-annual basis. You kind of pop in. Um, so it's not quite as laborious as it looked on the first read through for me. I, I think there is benefit to involving a larger group in looking at route surface development schedule. Um, and I had a brief period of time serving on TCMC and we worked pretty hard through some challenging conversations at times on creating a system where we would be looking for feedback and receiving feedback from people living near that trail. Um, I think that's a really valid and important thing. And I'd love to see that some sort of process with the same intention among this committee as well. Um, because I believe the this all came from people being frustrated that they didn't feel like they were being heard or represented or listened to um, in the planning. So I think finding a way to structure that in our charge sounds really important. Um, and the, the two thirds majority of the two committees together does sound challenging. I can see the benefits to it though. Yeah, like I, I feel like you can get people together. I think so. I think we, we ought to get together as a town on that point. Good John Lennonson. Huh? Good John Lennonson. No, no, no talking in between. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, we got to keep it. Uh, okay, so um, we have worked our way through these two red line documents. And again, I go back to um, the direction I got from the last meeting, although it seems like Peter might get a different uh, feedback, but... I return back to the um, agenda that the uh, town manager's office helped me work out uh, for this and that um, we were to look at the two red line different uh, drafts for the TCMC. And when I look at this, they are two separate committees, not one. So to Bob, 
It may be that the TCMC has changed their mind, but um, as of this draft, it's my interpretation that it's one committee with a Upper Charles Trail Committee being a subcommittee of that and that they have to go to the TCMC and work with the TCMC for funding, the applications for, um, see you're shaking your head, but when I read that, that's what I've, I've read into it. Yeah, that's not what I sent to the select board. And then you've been CC'd on that. So that that's not what the select this board. This is what you sent me. Right, but I also sent you the cover letter before, because I did not have the red line strikeout version of one or the other of them early, so I redid well, that. But the this is what I sent you. This is what we're going what with. I did was I forwarded you what I sent to the select board, and that says there's two committees. And continue to disagree with that, but <laughs> there are two committees. Okay, so we may have to have another meeting, and I may have to get uh, diff different documents to share with the committee. But this is what we have to work with tonight. So it could be that if you, if the committee has, if the TCMC has changed their mind, that's okay. Um, and we can talk about that. And so uh, moving on, because we have to work with what we have. Um, so now I'm going to ask committee members to look at the Upper Charles Trail Committee charge as adapted by the select board, um, drafted by Erfron. And that's dated February um, 20th, 24. And it says you see to the charge. Yeah, uh, okay. Um, yeah. It just says zero, 27, okay. There's the last one. It starts with pursuant to the powers granted by the select board, blah, blah, blah. And then in red, and in compliance with the select board's December 8, 2020 pledge, principles and action system, systematic racism is our community and other communities. So that's the one we're looking at right now. Can we go yeah. to a table? Would you like to start, Jamie, first, or would you yeah. like to? <laughs> I like my penultimate spot. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, we'll okay. go with Jim. He's happy. So, <laughs> right in I like just to get clear what we're looking at and referring to. Yes. It's a three page document. In the two, upper three. left corner, it says Feb period 20, yeah. 2024. Correct. The title is Upper Child Trail Committee, second line committee charge, third line adopted by Board of Selectmen, February 28, 2017. Correct. That was the original. Uh, enabling of the Upper Child Trail Committee. Uh, no, no, I'm going to interrupt. That was our second draft. Okay, that's right. Okay. It, right. We, that is, but that's the current one. Correct. That's now, the most current. This was in, in the version that I'm looking at, in the version we're looking at, was revised by Irfan. Irfan. Yep. No, you're right. Irfan. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. And there is a few changes on it, updating it for religious reasons or whatever. Um, and um, the only thing that I would say about this, and I, I'm all for this, um, except again, uh, I'm all for each committee having a, a, a member on each other's committee. I do think that the liaison should be voting. I, mean, I don't see why anybody would want to be a liaison if they're not a voting member. And um, and I think that this still maintains the uh, we, that the uh, Upper Child Trail Committee can request funding from uh, CBA monies. Right, that still maintains that. Correct in this version. That's the terms. No, I can't. But I, okay, that said, let me ask. Make sure I'm clear on what we're talking about. Here. I have two other documents here. One of which is got the Town Hopkins after the selection. This is the original TCMC charge, I assume, dated January 15, 2019, Peter? Yes. Revised by TCMC, red lines and underscored with the adding language. This document foresees one committee as a subcommittee, right? No, wait, wait. The second thing I'm looking at is the Child's Trail Committee charge 
dated upper left corner, October 3rd, 2023, prepared by TCMC in the upper right corner. This was TCMC's revision of the 2017 Upper Child's Trail Committee charge, right? Okay. So now what you're saying is this other one that I'm looking at here is not what you propose. The one that's titled, you know, with the town of town Hopkinson uh, seal, that's not what you're proposing. You're proposing something different. That we haven't seen. That we haven't seen. At least you may have sent that out, but we haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. So right now, no, that's that's what we sent out the red line. Okay, so this does not envision two committees. This is right. one no. rail committee with a subcommittee called the Upper Charles Building Committee. Right. The Upper Charles Trail, the Upper Charles, it, it basically makes two name changes. One, the Trails Coordination and Management Committee, which is is and has been a mouthful, um, would be changed to the Trails Committee, and the Upper Charles Trail Committee would be changed to the Upper Charles Trail Building Committee to indicate, clarify for the public that the not, charge of the Upper Charles we're Trail. We're not talking about the name change. Wait, wait, wait. It's, talking but it's, about, it's important because I think it, it gets to. What he, I think Jim is referring to is the fact that it's going to be it's, under the it's umbrella. Subcommittee. No, it's not. Where does it say that in here, though? That's what Jim is looking it, it for. Doesn't, it doesn't say in either one that the one is in charge of the other. And in fact, the fact that both committees are required for this two-third vote, I think makes it clear that they're two separate committees. Now, certainly that could be put in, but again, this is what we recommended to the select board with regard to these two separate committees. Okay, so you would propose, or you're proposing, there's two charges, one for Upper Tallis Trail, one for Trail Man, but whatever you call them now. Right. This is the one for formerly TCMC, this is the one for formerly UCC. Correct. These would be in in your two separate committees. Your uh, five, six. So hope and pray that we would have two separate committees and these would be the charges for those two committees. Okay. That was not my understanding, but thank you for clarifying that. And I'll just add one last thing. I will go to my grave believing the Java Child Trail Committee did what it was charged to do. It does not have the luxury of whatever the other committees called in terms of having all public property available to run trails. There were roadblocks along the way. There are obstacles that all had to be overcome. Everybody in this committee has been committed, and the committee, as far as I'm concerned, has been successful in what it was charged to do. And the public was always invited to attend our meetings, you and sometimes specifically. Um, there has never been a closed door meeting. The agenda has always been published. Anybody from the public can always come. Upper Charles Trail Committee had uh, outreach sessions, plans posted, people comment, people can look at them, comment. And the only reason that we're seeing you today and talking about this is because there was a, a, a potential segment of the trail that included Hayden Rowe and somebody, you know, gathered a mob of people opposed to that and used that as an excuse to dismantle the committee as it was and to change the charging committee. Uh, but for that, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Right? All right, I'm done. I think. <laughs> Eric. Oh, yeah, I'm done. The, um, in looking at Earth Farms, uh, I have several problems with it. One, he is recommending an eight member committee. Not uh, nine. I couldn't well, believe it. Technically 11. Well, <laughs> right, right. He says Two. here this committee shall consist of five members of large. Oh, no, okay. three other members may say. Right. He said the math doesn't. Yeah, you, you still don't know that. There's a very small large time. He has nine in a different part of the document. Right, right. Yeah, you're both so right. So you're right. You're right. So right. So you know, we're talking about hey, between eight, eight or nine. Between 10 and 11, you could say. Because <laughs> it's too old to this. Having been on more committees than all of you added together, so let me tell you the more members you have, the more chaos you have. And the less accomplishment you have. It's been 
my experience as I look at this and it says uh, he doesn't want the chairman or the vice chairman to succeed themselves. That's like saying, okay, the most dedicated person can't do it again in the next year, so we're going to take one of these other people and spend half a year trying to bring them up to speed. And then when they can finally accomplish something, we're not going to let them do it. We're going to go through that process all over again. The only place in town that I know where the uh, chairman doesn't seem to uh, uh, serve consecutive uh, terms is the select board. And after watching last night's meeting, I'm not sure that's a good idea. The um, yeah, basically, yes, I think. No, including on the liaison appointments. They're not liaisons as in a liaison report. These are layoff liaison committee members. They just happen to come from uh, someplace other than the select board. Virtually every appointed committee, not elected, but appointed committee, as voting members from other committees, and it's designed that way to give a cross view of what other committees are thinking and how uh, those things happen. For example, I'm on the, uh, uh, the uh, CPC. The members on the CPC are three at large one from the Historical Commission, one from the Planning Board, one from the Parks and Rec, and one from Conservation. They're all voting members. And they all have a, a very, very important- Individual perspective. In the case of the Weeds Committee, which I'm on, we have a member from the Conservation Commission. We have a member from the Lake Maspinock Commission. And it's done because they are people whose committees interact with the uh, other committee. So for Irfan to recommend that these members don't vote, I have a real problem with that because it's against virtually everything that's ever been done with appointed committees in this town. In fact, I get on this committee as a representative of Parks and Rec back 100 years ago. Do we have a Parks and Rec person? No. Not right now. It was good to be able to Cynthia, who was a hard worker, yeah. was our Parks and Rec person. So from my standpoint, uh, I would leave those three positions in place and make them voting members. Uh, who's the other one? What, uh, you say he says there's nine members. The select board. Six at large? No, nine, about five at large and three alternates and two, no, two alternates. You need nine voting members. We have what he's outlined here. So he's got five. He struck out the six that was in the original charge. Paragraph up above says the committee shall have nine full members. So I think yeah. it's this probably maybe altered it, it down below. It didn't it's a little bit better. Yeah. I'm assuming you had to reduce it because it looks like it's not the edit. It's nine eight. members. He's got to have six at large right. for another liaison. Yeah, I think maybe it could have been a little bit better. I would say it needs a complete rewrite to be sensical. Oh, well, that'd be very charitable. charitable. <laughs> but, oh. But it does make our discussion of what we don't like about it a little hard because I'm 100% unclear what they're but what they're visioning. So I don't want to else I don't want to like go say oh they're wrong for saying this this or this. No. I don't know what to say, but so I guess my I walk out the comments. So I'm sorry. No, that's fine because based on what you just said, you agree. Well, so I don't right. It, it's interesting, but in black text, so in the original charge, it said that they had nine full members who were all served in 
at the book select boards described it. From the moment this point was made, okay, that point taken was the thing. We got it. We got it. We heard it. I'm just saying, in black text, in the original charge, they did claim to have control of all of them. I don't know how that, and, and then right below that, they then well, said that they were, that one designate would be recommended by each of the commissions, which is a little bit different than the structure you talked about, okay. and, and, and different from how we have to, I think the membership has consisted in that each board has just sent their member without going through the select board for re for appointment, but I don't that's know. That's not true. You have to get approved by the yeah. select board. Okay. Oh, for example, I'm yep. nominated, whatever you want to call it, from Con Con. Okay. Select board needs to depart. I'm still there. Okay. okay. The, so it's not done just by an okay. individual committee or committee. So if the, if the select board decided they wanted to change okay. the membership, okay. they could okay. go back to your board? The thing we're looking at from the select board is 2000. 17. Yes. Yeah. This committee was formed two years before that. Yeah. No, I have no. five years. It was cool. So 2017. It was, it was, it was, I was like liaison 2012 in this committee's second okay. year. Yep. So I, I understand that this committee has been around for a long time. But it's, <laughs> So we have nine plus two now. I, we have nine, but we don't. Have okay, no. Tim has talked about it. One of let's, select, okay. Right. Let's so what it. I noticed, it's just not. What I noticed from her upon the last does it. not include adding someone from what just missing one. currently the TCM. So maybe that's the nine member, but then they would be non voting members. I don't know. It needs to be right. corrected. Uh, I did see that they added one member has social media experience. I don't know. That could be it. <laughs> so they say a preference shall be given to candidates to ensure. I don't know. I think it was just a typo on his part. No, no, no. But I guess my, my point is, is that as long as it's a preference and not a requirement, because to some degree, we have to deal with what who applies. We haven't not appointed very many applies that I know of <laughs> recently, anyway. And so we do the best with what we get. And I hate when a charter says you have to do X, Y, Z because they never you know, don't have to. Mike, Dick. Oh. So my, I guess my biggest thing is I th really think that there can be looked at and clarified because the membership, the voting members versus not voting members confused me a little bit. Oh. Point taken. And then the fact that it's missing mentioned, I think it's a mistake to not mention the, re the relationship to the trails made this committee. So, and so I, I think we, at the very least, would recommend they consider adding. Mm -hmm. and it's all good. We all agree on that. Cool. Yes, I, Scott. Um, so I don't know if it's in a particular order because my computer's ready to die. So I transcribed, I know it's over. I think it is missing uh, TCMC membership reference or cross-reference, I think UCTC should be, there should be cross-membership of a member on either, uh, on both, I should say. Um, agree keyword on the roles that are preferred, but not required. Uh, I would change, am I talking too fast, Jane? If you're taking notes, okay, let me know. I'll work out. Um, I would change um, social media experience to technology because you guys know I've been an advocate of that to make sure our website and everything is maintained and and kind of cleaned up uh, for the public to easily find and access Did what they want. Consider just dropping that and going with the TCM same person to make number nine. Well, I haven't got the numbers yet because I, I I hate to admit it, but I agree with you on the size of the membership. <laughs> um, so I'm getting there. I'm getting to the membership size. 
Um, but I think I change um, preference. It's not required because these are not required members and they should be. To Tim's point, absolutely, we go with who volunteers. And if there are two people for one spot and one has technology experience and the other one doesn't, I sh we show preference, the select board of whoever. Um, there, um, this came up at our meeting last time. Or, I don't know. I raised it originally, but I supported whoever did. Um, we need to we need to have mention in our uh, in the charter of deliberate periodic checkpoints or status updates to the select board. And I think someone had mentioned four times a year. I don't know the frequency, but I think we have to have deliberate. We have to be guaranteed to be on their agenda X number of times a year because there has been. It has drifted, we'll call it politely, right? And so we've acknowledged that our, our connection uh, hasn't remained consistent. Um, we, I mentioned a couple of times tonight, sorry if I'm being repetitive here, but we need to mention in the charter there, the joint coordination between the TCMC uh, and the UCTC. In, and I think, and I envision bullet points underneath it. So the two committees shall, coordinate in the following ways, you know, things like, um, um, you know, make the other committees aware prior to submitting applications for grants. Um, there should be circumstances where they make them aware and consult but not have to put forth and vote on one going forward, but to cross compare. Um, if there is a need for, um, you know, if, if we're going, if, if both committees at the very same time are dipping the same grant, potentially, I think there may be a need to, to go to the select board, but I don't know if we put that in our charter, but potentially. And the last is, again, a little bit repetitive. I think there needs to be language that does differentiate the two committees. So I'd say that there's language that both differentiates and shows how they complement and coordinate and work closer together. Um, I think that's it. And it died. Oh, no, it didn't. Let me check, make sure. Oh, yeah, and the membership. Absolutely think nine is too many members. Um, I think where it gets sticky, and boy, I'd have to, I still have to do more thinking. If, if it were up to me, I, I think I'd reduce the membership to seven. Um, where I think I would cut the membership um, is in a couple places. I would not have alternates to keep it to seven. Um, still have the liaisons, but the two that I mentioned here, well, I think um, Conservation Commission, um, I would probably not have Parks and Rec, and I would have um, CPC um, continue. Um, and then again, we have the TCMC. <coughs> no, wh who is the other one? We, not that Parks and Rec it. and- uh, three. No, but who is the third? The select board. Select, 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 select board, thanks. Yeah, oh, those guys. That's what I was saying. If we if we put the checkpoints, we could eliminate it. But I say them. But I still. Right. But I, <laughs> no cross back. But I say eliminate the, the the select board and the parks and rec, and I keep the conservation commission. Mm -hmm. Not that I have anything against park and rec, but I would hope that um, all the things going on there and the connection of the conservation commission with between them should certainly more than satisfy that. And then I know they were a hard time. Yeah. Please, no, no, no back and forth. This is validating. And let's take an agreement. I'll take it when I get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, anyways, I know I'm taking a lot of air time. So last, last point would be that, so strike the two alternate members, strike the uh, Parks and Rec and Select Board, as long as we have the checkpoints. And then I think it's seven members. Um, and then I think there has to be something about the terms of the members, but I actually don't think we should limit um, the um, the ability for um, officers to serve multiple times in a row. I think that needs to be up to the membership to to vote and serve that. Okay, thank you, um, Ken. I don't really have a lot unique to say. I mean, I I, I agree uh, about many of these other points. Uh, I'm kind of confused as to why we're even discussing this, given what we discussed first, which was the two seven-member committees. So uh, for simplicity's sake, I would go along with the logic that maybe this committee ought to only have seven members without any alternates. Um, 
I think it's silly to have to require that the chairman turn over as quickly as that. I think there ought to be yearly elections, but beyond that, uh, we should be able to decide what we want, uh, as other committees can. Um, liaisons, I mean, I think it's silly to say liaisons shall not be voting members. I think it's conceivable that, that we could have liaisons that are not. But then I don't know how that would fit in the seven membership thing. I mean, it, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, I mean, I I, 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 I guess we could just say that, you know, liaisons from other committees are always welcome. But uh, I don't know that that needs to be part of the charge. Um, I don't know. I'm, uh, I've always worried about including accessibility for all users of the path. I, I'd like that to be qualified with wherever possible. It's because um, I think we've got some geographic uh, constraints and some things aren't going to be possible for everything. And there's still the skateboarder argument. So, not, you know, the, it would be ideal if we could have, have the trail accessible to blind people, for example, everywhere, but that, uh, well, it, it will be accessible to them, whether they can do it without having someone to help them go on the trail. And that would it be it would be nice if we could, but that's a lot to ask. I think. Uh, I don't know. So, yeah, I don't think the select board needs to be a member, ha have a, a member on the committee. They should always be welcome to stand in and participate, as anyone else can. Jim. When he's finished. Right. Yeah, it's pretty much all I have to say, I guess. Okay. Eric, do you want to add something? I want to clarify what I said. I think the ultimate uh, ground for all of this is to have a seven member committee. You have uh, a liaison from conservation, selectmen appoint six or five, have a liaison full voting member of our committee from the TCMC to keep the two non voting alternates. I think they're the, they're the I think they add to it and they get themselves trained to replace us as we go away. Additionally, it works very, very well for the uh, uh, appeals board. They have to, and that, that works very well. So I envision a seven member committee, one of which from trails, one from uh, CONCOM, five from the selectmen, and that should be seven and then two alternates non voting. But you can vote in need or in times of need or not. Yeah. That could vote in time. I didn't think of this one when I was talking. Can the, the, the one advantage of the alternates is that they could vote if there was not a quorum or at least yeah, well, help, us, that. I mean, help uh, us get to. He proposed something different. Yeah. So, yeah, I would point out. I would point out that our bond started slightly different language. It says they can vote if any member. That's currently the way it is. As if, if there's not a majority. Oh, they can replace any member as opposed to going either way to merit the group to be. Right. So, so I don't know. I guess I'm just pointing it out. I'm not the making it. The never had a problem with alternates in 15 years or wherever the hell it is. What are you doing with it? Oh. Okay, so let's try and keep this not back and forth. Okay, Bob, do you have anything to add? Bob, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, I'm getting my microphone on. Um, oh, okay, <laughs> we can hear you. Actually, yeah, actually, I think the... Uh, Parks and Rec's liaison is important that they always have served an important role in our committee. So I don't like the idea of eliminating that. Um, and if it means making the committee bigger, then even that's worthwhile to me. 
um, in terms of and, and um, in terms of all these uh, somewhat uh, uncertain numbers that uh, arise from the way Irfan structured his changes. Um, I don't even want to. I don't even want to uh, speculate on what he really intends. Um, but I do think that the biggest thing that he put in his uh, changes is the accessibility idea and or the accessibility explicit uh, uh, restraint. So, and I kind of agree with Ken also that that accessibility should say wherever possible. Um, but at any rate, uh, that's to me, that's the most important thing that he's introduced there and all the other things um, we can go go forward and work with, um, I'm sure. So, but I do like having the liaison for Parks and Recs. Uh, and that would be it. Okay, hey, thank you, Jamie. Um, as far as the accessibility piece, I would suggest instead of whenever possible, just saying maximizing accessibility, that I think that covers the, and I think it makes it a little, I, I don't know, there's words I prefer. Um, something that he did add that we haven't talked about yet was the, um, obviously there's a public comment at any meeting, um, but the revi revision that Irfan suggested includes that any suggestion made by the public shall be discussed as an agenda item at the following meeting. And any decision on the agenda item shall document the decision making process, as well as reasoning for why any particular suggestion is accepted, rejected, or otherwise. Okay. I like that because I think that the uh, while anyone can come to the meetings, um, it's not always easy. There's lots of reasons that people can't. And I think it's valuable to as an olive branch to the public or anyone who felt that they weren't being heard if they attend or remotely or in person and provide a question or a concern. I understand we can't necessarily go back and forth in that meeting, but by guaranteeing we're putting it on the next agenda, I think that does elevate the concerns of members of the public in a way that is demonstrable, documented, and I think that's valuable towards working towards better collaboration and proof that we're listening. Um, I personally really like the idea of a change that alternate members may vote when a committee member is absent instead of the current structure, which is only if a quorum is not achieved. Um, I've made a great effort to come to every meeting I possibly can, and it can get frustrating when there's one person missing and as an alternate, I'm not able to participate um, beyond speaking. I think it should be clear if we're looking at making a liaison like welcome to come versus a voting liaison or non-voting liaison that we identify if they are participating at the meeting at the table versus being a member of the public in the chair, like off the table. You know what I mean? Um, just because I think that if a select board member were to come, are they then sitting here at the table or are they sitting in the seats of people who are observing the meeting? participating in the discussion or not. Like, I think that should be clear. Um, I think it might make sense to have something in there because of the, I, I can see why Irfan put in the limitations on chair and vice chair. Um, I understand where he was coming from there. I agree that limiting it to a one year may be too much, um, but finding a way to Ensure that voices are elevated that might be a little bit different, I think could be valuable. Um, I like the deliberate agenda items on the select board to maintain that connection better. And I agree that we need to have a more clear documentation about the relationship between Upper Charles and trail coordination and management. Yeah, Pretty thoughtful. Um, Okay, so many uh, good thoughts have gone around tonight. Um, I just want to throw out uh, one thing, um, probably out of order, but in the red line document for the Upper Charles Trail Committee, um, one of it, oh, 
stated that the Upper Charles Trail Building Committee funding requests um, are rel as relevant to the Upper Charles Trail. All votes as to the funding requests milestones shall require two thirds votes of the majorities of this combination of committee. So that to me suggests that it's one committee. That's where I was coming from with that. So, and to, so it could be that it's misunderstanding. It needs to be further clarification, but that's what I am coming from. Um, to me, I think the 11 um, membership is fine, but I would say get rid of the alternates and just make everybody a voting member, just like on planning board and so many other um, committees where everyone votes. There's no alternates. There, you know, just you request to join the committee if there's a vacancy. You come on board, you learn as you go along, and um, you vote. I think this voting and non-voting was something that I heard loud and clear from the public at the annual town meeting, and it it really doesn't need to be there. I think we can just, the one thing that I would suggest, and I don't know how this would work into this, is that the select board member not be a voting member. Um, when we first started this committee, we had a select board member who was our committee member for, uh, for three years, and he made it perfectly clear that he felt um, he was there to advise, to guide, to consult, and support, but he did not feel he wanted to vote because he wanted to remain neutral. He felt that that was more important for the town um, to be neutral in all aspects. So he refused to vote in all aspects. So if that could be adjusted into the membership so that he were a member, but not necessarily a voting member, I think it's important to, as what Bob says, I think it's very important to have CONCOM, Parks and Rec, and CPC members as liaisons because they offer so much. A CPC member. Uh, well, what do we have? We have Parks and Rec. Um, I'm a bit confused because we have three. We have a selectman. We have okay, so I, so Parks and Rec conservation. Parks and Rec and conservation, because they offer so much. If we had to consult with, um, if we had to make a, or have a conversation and then go back and chase down a CONCON member for our information, we'd be spinning our wheels and wasting a lot of time. Having an, a, um, you know, an, a, a member here that can speak to that adds so much. And it's the same thing with Parks and Rec. We go through so many of the properties that Parks and Rec oversees. And I know Cynthia was invaluable over the years as an advisor. And I've forgotten who was the liaison before that. But um, it was you know, really crucial to our role. But um, I could go on and on, but I think that so many of the points have been made already. Um, but those were some of the things that I wanted to point out right now. Jim, do you have something to add? Yes, I come in peace and I have a... We're, we're trying to leave this meeting with a revised charge from the Upper Charles Trail Committee. No, we did that the last time. Select boards. We did that the last time. Are we talking about this meeting to... commenting on uh, earth Well, we have our comments that we can send in. Um, I think those are collective comments that we have on all three documents that we can send in. Okay, if there is a need, yeah, and if they, if um, the select board, I guess, decides that they want us to meet again and discuss further. Uh, but that's that's what is on the agenda okay. for tonight. I put one last question, comments about this. So there's been discussion of the center trail being incorporated as part of the Upper Child Trail. I think in something I saw from TCMC that is stricken from, and by the way, this is a side note, I don't really understand. I never will why TCMC is revising the Upper Child Trail Committee charge. But in any event, in their revision, they strike incorporates the Upper Senate Trail. Her friend didn't do that. No. As a committee, do we want to talk about whether the Senate Trail is well, not a part of? 
Uh, to your point, we had a discussion at the last meeting, but uh, Jamie wasn't here. I don't know if she has any firm feelings about it, but I think didn't collectively we agree that the center trail should be part of it because we felt it had a historical a significance to the town and a cultural significance to the town. And okay. um, also that, except for one member who felt that it should be stricken. But if I think it, to our committee's credit, um, many years ago, we looked at that possibility and looked going down just the, strictly the east side of Hopkinton and discovered very quickly that it was not possible because it's so built up in back of, um, you know, all, all those uh, Ash Street and, you know, Robin Road and all those roads. Scott. Sure. I think where Jim was going, don't want to put words in your mouth, Jim, is what I was thinking of raising as a group because I was curious as to next steps. I have not seen a written revised charter from this group presented to select board. I saw a series of notes and comments, which is almost like line of, of notes and minutes type of concept. But we have, I think we should come up with a revised charter, which incorporates charge. Char and yeah. charge, charge. Sorry, I business is charter. My head's still in business world. It's a charge. I think admittedly it's going to be a little challenging and painful, but we'll get alignment. We'll take a vote on it. And that's what we submit as our as our version. I don't think we have that yet. That for a next Excuse agenda me? item, maybe. Um a if conversation. We're to meet, I believe so we, I would you're right, because it's not but I I, I I don't I hope it's not a stretch to get that approval. I don't know. <clears throat> I think we're close, aren't we? I mean I, what I'm hearing I admit I dozed off a couple of times, but the only questions are about the number of members, right. where they come from, and now I threw in the uh, the, the Senate trail. Beyond that, you know, I, you know, I certainly accept all the... I, I don't know. I think there has to be language. There's just a couple of things that we need to change from airplanes or comments on airplanes, and we're done. I don't know. Um, and by uh, the way, when you say technology, yeah, yeah. information technology. Yeah, yeah. But I think, I, I would hope we're close, but I think we have to go through the process and come up with our draft. That's what I'm suggesting. You don't think so? Okay. Based on our, I don't want to get into a. You don't want to write a draft. Yeah, but aren't we there? Battle. You know, you got TCM seats yeah. draft. You got. Well, I don't think we you should. Got you got it. our funds draft. You got. Oh, let me do it. Well, job. We have a draft. Okay. We yeah. have a charge <laughs> that we've operated under for. 15 years or whatever the hell it is. So we've been asked. Okay. If they want to change it, let them change it. How about this? Why don't we do? put it in at, at, the, at the end of the suggested comments going forward to the select board because we don't know if we're going to be allowed to. Can I make a motion of the chair? Yes, motion. Um, and people, and no disrespect to Eric, I think, you know, I, I respect your point, but I make a motion that we request to the select board or I make a motion to this group that we uh, we produce our own version of the minutes. That's okay. what I make a motion. And how version of the minutes or the um, of, of the chart. I think the chart. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I you make get? a motion that we produce our own version of the charge and and for ultimate submission to the select board. So how do we get there? Well, it has to go before a motion. We can vote on it, but then it will be incorporated into the minutes to go to the forward to the select board, and they will approve it or not. So, okay, will you, let's see, would you accept the motion to propose changes to motion? The motion? Huh? No. All right, so let's have a clear motion. So the clear motion is uh, to, propose, uh, to propose a version of the Upper Charles Trail Committee um, charge after as a result of all of these discussions to go forward to the select board. Okay, so is there a second to the motion? We're gonna do that. Uh, so Scott uh, proposed that, no, we're gonna make the motion now and then we'll present it to the select board with the minutes. Scott comes a motion. The motion is to create the draft yeah. at another. At an, at an subsequent meeting. Subsequent meeting. Second 
Okay, all in favor. All right. Do you need to do a roll call? Yeah, we do need to do a roll call. Um, Eric. No. Eric, uh, well, I need to write this down, so no. Um, Bob. Bob, how do yes. you vote? Bob is a yes. Uh, Eli's not here. Uh, Jim. Why? Yes. Uh, Ken. No. No. Erfron is not here. Jamie. I'm an alternate. Jimmy doesn't get a vote. Present. Shit. Um, Kim, no, present. nope. <laughs> present. <laughs> Jen is a yes. Um, Scott. Yes. Okay, the vote carries one, two, three, four to two. All right, Madam Chair, I'm curious, what would be the alternate motion for those that voted no? What would, I mean, uh, uh, let's, I, let's ask. I was just some motions. Uh, uh, Ken. My reason for voting with Eric is just that I do agree that we're kind of being dictated to, and they've already taken the, uh, you know, started with a charge, and uh, I hope they listen to us. And if they don't, uh, they still have the power to do what they want. So, right. just in, in, in saving time, it seems to me that hopefully they can spend, they, they, they can take into account what we've discussed here and, and, and do the job for us it's better, just more of, more efficiently than we can. I, I'm, I'm, if if uh, if the only thing we had to accomplish was was coming up with a charge, then by all means we could we can keep discussing it. But I'm kind of tired of it as well. <laughs> Eric, you agree with Ken? How <laughs> <I'll> say you? <laughs> it just shows that um, it doesn't show anything. Thanks for being so You agree with Ken because I yeah, I've said for pretty well. Actually, we've been agreeing on a lot of things. Oh, a lot of things. I agree with you. Agree on a lot of yeah. things. things. It would. It would. I guess it's just a last you know, you know, to try and cooperate, collaborate, and you know, try and reason for bring everybody together. Uh, yeah, is because we will enter into a wordsmithing contest yeah, yeah. with the board of selectmen. And every little dinky part of it will have a half hour discussion and mean nothing. And through that, my whole career with when I got involved in big committees and everybody had to have a little point and everything turned into a waste of time and chaos. Okay, thank so you. We'll leave it for us. You can send out for our comments. Gonna... All right, it doesn't matter. I mean, we don't even know well, if they're going to let us meet again. Right. Well, that should be. You want to make like a motion that uh, you put in that uh, they reinstate us as a committee and let us operate instead of this bullshit of them. Wait a minute. I don't think that's going to get. Us. Well, anyway, you made a motion. Is there a second? Oh. Only one want a second. No, nope, oh. no one wants a second. Okay, so I do have a, a comment I want to take from um, Peter, who has so graciously been sitting there. Uh, just a reminder from our meeting with Irfan, Elaine, Norman, you and I. Um, Norman spelled out that what he was looking for from this group was the overall charge separated in and in, in this committee's thoughts on the three on three bucket items basically the charge generally so that would include you know connecting from milford to ashland whether or not it goes through center trail the process to be used by the committee which again you've you've hit all the pieces but i think it's important to put it in one place and then the composition of the committee those are the three questions that norman Posed to be discussed or to be addressed. The chair, I didn't know that. No, I so, didn't know that. I mean, I, I, so I, 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 I it wasn't I, in the notes. I, I, I kind of want to withdraw. Right, but that was in our withdraw my motion because I don't want to go through the effort, what? and I'd rather well, focus on okay. those three items. I didn't know that. Sir. I'll tell you what. You didn't know about that either, right? No, no those yeah. items. Like all we have to do is answer those three items. Scott, to be clear, those are the. I mean, if you put a charge together. That's well, my the I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Peter. It was not in the agenda that they gave us, it's not here. 
No, but in our conversation, it normal, might have been right? in the conversation. Right. In fairness, sense. however, when I asked for clarification and I asked them because I would, it was all over the place. If you can remember, mm -hmm. that was not in the agenda. So if they want to further this the agenda process, yeah. Um, <laughs> We can certainly do that, but they specifically asked uh, to the, our committee to look at the red line documents. Regarding the scope of work of the committee, the process for undertaking that work, and committee composition. Item two. Right. So Did that's you? when you say when you hit all when we hit all the points. Right. That's well, what we did. Through the chair now hearing this. I, I, well, I, I don't think, but I know with all this. So I don't think we should go through all the language, and this goes back to Eric's point about all the things I wanted to add to Erfron's and modify where the interconnection between the two things. That seems to be out of scope of what they asked us to do. Um, that's, we we didn't talk anything about process, which you guys know I'm, I'm all over that. Uh, you guys right never understand it. So what you were saying, or well, it's in our agenda. Everyone has the agenda. Everyone read it. It's clear as drops of milk to me. So okay, well, then the, the, the having heard new information, I want to focus. You can withdraw your motion if you want because you have now new information. I would like to withdraw my motion. Oh, you can't. Yeah. So, sorry, voted. Sorry, voted. Uh, okay, Scott, process is, I think, I think what you guys, you guys discussed it. The you, process. Semantics, but process, for example, is we ought to interact with the trails committee. That's the process. So how do we move this in? And we're going to. By the way, it works both ways, right? right. How much oh, yeah. collaborating have you done? Do you oh, okay. I apologize. No. Chair, would you entertain okay. a motion to adjourn? <laughs> Let me. I got stuff now. What you can do about your thing is make a new motion rescinding the old motion, and it has to be voted on. Your initial motion was voted on that made it official correct now make a motion to disregard it or do away with it and we'll vote on that and that's how you get rid of it but that's how it's got to be done okay? i don't see why you would i mean well that's all that thank you thank you yeah um um i do think we need to talk about process more if the result of us going through and looking at the chart in detail will include process, I'll keep the motion that I have. I, don't I know. do not want to go through words, nothing. I will. Um, I, but that, so I think it stays as remains as motion. Anyone have anything else to add to this? Yeah, yeah. Jimmy. Yes, Bob, go ahead. Can you hear me still? Um, yes, we can hear you. I voted I voted yes because I agreed with Jen that we're very, very close. This thing, that this revised charge we can do um, in the next meeting. And therefore, we should. That's a process. Just a matter of it's a that. process. I think we covered it, but go ahead. This is a whole process. We have to go through all these red line documents. We have to have a discussion. Um, I think we hit a lot of the main points that we need to have. And if we're allowed to have another vote, we can. Well, let's see what the select that. board says. If they disagree that we should get together to talk about another charge, if they have enough, then the decision is on them. If they Correct. think that if they, they would like enough. to see a charge from us, I think it would be a good thing for us to put that forward. So yeah. we've now put the decision to the select board. Okay. Anything else? Or do I, can I entertain a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, so Eric. Yeah. Well, no, I said. Who second, Ken? I did. Thank you. Okay, roll call vote. Eric. Yes. Bob. Yes. Jim. Yes. Ken. Yes. 
And Jane is a yes. And Scott is a yes. And Scott is a yes. Sorry about that. That's okay. Scott, I was expecting it. It's because you're at the bottom. We're not going to have to move you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.